Good morning, everyone. Hey, I bet you it looks a little different than usual. That's because I'm not standing on a stage with beautiful velvet curtains, though it sort of looks that way. I'm standing in a studio apartment on Lopez Island and out the window in front of me, I'm watching the swallows feed their babies and fly about. And I welcome you to this beautiful Sunday, wherever you're, you're listening from. We are so happy that you're joining us. I'd love to turn this over to Amber to get us started with some wonderful music. Enjoy. Good morning, everybody. Oh, let me love in a holy, holy way. Let me love, let me love in a holy, holy way. Oh, let me love in a holy, holy way. Let me love, let me love in a holy, Oh, let me know that love is all around. Let me know, let me know that love is all around. Oh, let me know that love is all around. Let me know, let me know that love is all around. Oh, let me love it. Center for Spiritual Living. I'm Amber Darlin. We're so glad you're here. If you're on social media this morning, give a shout out to some of those friends out there. This is the time in our service where we love to stay connected to our spiritual community. Um, maybe you're new too. Uh, throw your name up there and say hello. Welcome to you all. All right. Let's sing My Soul is Welcome Here. Welcome here, I am getting the mess. 
thanks for singing along, everyone. We're going to head over to our practitioner of the day for an invocation. Good morning. I'm so happy to be here with you today. I'm Wanda Maddox, and as Amber said, the practitioner of the day, and I'm looking forward to sharing this time with you. And I'm so happy that each of our souls chose to be in this place, in the right place this morning together. Please join with me in a prayer. One magnificent, beautiful, divine givingness, the greatest power, the presence of all divine love, ever giving, an abundance of good, always flowing in this river of life, the great and magnificent world created by this one presence and power. Infinite, eternal, the light and breath of every life, every form in this world. That magnificent presence is the power within you and within me. I am saying these words using the word I, and these words are intended for everyone hearing this prayer. Each of us are the being of the I am. We are expressing, and I know that this power and presence is always within me. I'm never alone. And this is leading me as I pause and listen, leading me forward, always showing the way for the right step, for the next best possible good to flow from me, to me, through me always moving with grace and ease and the courage to take the step, the next step. I let go of any worry about the past, any attachment or aversion to the future, and in the now, and with every ounce of perfect perfected power in me, I am courageous in taking my step forward in this beautiful life, being the expression of the divine love within. For this knowing, for this time together, reinforcing all of our great connections, always as one, I am eternally grateful. I embrace this, I know it, and I release these words into the law of mind, knowing that as they have been spoken and spoken for all hearing the words, it is done, and so it is. You are the face of I hold you in my heart You are a part of me You are the face of God Let's sing that again You are the face of God
not a face of love. But Senor, the face of love. You are the face of love. I hold you in my heart. You are my family. You are the face of love. You are my family. Divine presence is always at hand. Take comfort as I am. Take comfort as I am. Surrender all need for a plan. Divine presence. Thanks, everyone. We're going to head over to our wonderful minister, Dr. Andrea Acevedo. Hey there. Thank you, Amber. Thank you, Wanda. Thank you, Philip and Joe. Um, to be able to broadcast to you from Lopez Island meant that Philip and Joe had to work a little extra just to make sure that we had the lighting so that you could see me and things like that. So thanks to them as well. The topic this morning under the monthly theme of what you see is all you get is take heart. And of course, take heart to me has to do with courage. Courage, the root word of courage is core, which is heart. Um, so I wanted to speak to you a little bit about these times we're in and what we can do spiritually in terms of how we hold ourselves and how we move forward. So I chose a quote from Maya Angelou uh, for today, long before the pandemic or anything else had happened. And it goes like this. Courage is the most important of all the virtues because without courage, you cannot practice any other virtue consistently. 
and she knew a lot about this topic. So courage is the most important of all the virtues, according to Maya. And I think for me too, because certainly if you're on a spiritual walk, you're going to have opportunities for growth and power and uh, you can back away from those things or you can enter into them. And in order to enter fully, it takes a, a great deal of courage sometimes to walk into the unknown, to claim the power that we have in new ways and to begin to learn and grow in different ways of being. It all takes a lot of courage. And of course, in our world, that's also true. So the spiritual path requires that. And so does the walk we have in our material world. So this talk today has to do with the inner and the outer. So hold that in mind as I read you something from one of my favorite storytellers, Clarissa Pincola Estes. And she, uh, she has a Facebook page if you're interested. And she wrote recently, last couple of days, uh, in response to everything that's happening in the outer world. And this is what she said. Dear brave souls, do not lose heart. We were made for times like these. Remember? Yes, remember. Do what you can to actively help, not just talk and anguish. Do whatever and with whomever else you can, whoever and whatever is close to your kindest heart, and it will help. Sometimes overturning what has been ruined or deposing the quote unquote ruiners is not available to us much as we dearly wish it were. But while we chip away at it, what we can do that entirely matters is continue to nourish and feed and encourage those most caught in the ruins. I know most of you know this down to the bones. When we have been so far down ourselves and there was at that moment a something a someone, a creature, a sign, a sudden word or music that was just enough or often more than enough to keep us going. Remember yourself when you think of how to help and do not think nothing can be done because all cannot be done at once. Let me read that again. Do not think nothing can be done because all cannot be done at once. That's something that I think a lot of us fall into. Remember your own difficulties. Remember that stranger who stopped and stepped in to help so very briefly, perhaps not even knowing they helped you, but they did. Think of this and act. Here we are in our tattered and radiant glory with minds and hearts untainted, walking together in action for those yet in the ruins. So I wanted to speak about that because we are looking at uh, deep changes societally and uh, we're always looking at deep changes spiritually. And um, one of the things that I'm aware of from my work with Thich Nhat Hanh, who invented the term engaged Buddhism and took himself out of the meditation hall and into action, uh, one of the things I've learned from him and his work is that he started in the meditation hall. And this is a really important point to me. So there's a very old catchphrase in the Science of Mind philosophy. It's called, you know, that we call our form of prayer, spiritual mind treatment. So the catchphrase goes like this, treat and move your feet. And both parts of that phrase are really important, but you'll notice what comes first is the spiritual mind treatment. You'll notice that what comes first in Thich Nhat Hanh's work is the meditation. In other words, you'll notice that for those that I feel are deeply grounded in right action in terms of working with societal issues as well as their own, they start spiritually. And why is this important? Well, maybe you've had the experience at a concert or a large gathering of people. Uh, maybe you've seen this on television 
where something unexpected will happen and the group will all of a sudden react. And it's like a instantaneous chain reaction. It's called groupthink in psychology. And all of a sudden we're swept up into whatever the group mind is doing. And sometimes that's great. Sometimes we're swept up in joy. Wonderful. But a lot of times where we see the damage done is we get swept up in anger. We get swept up in fear. And then out of that, we move in action without pausing to reflect, without moving from the deep down core of our spiritual knowing. And so it's super important for me. And because I am your spiritual teacher, super important for me to tell you that whatever it is that you are considering doing in terms of action, bravo. It takes so much courage for all of us to consider and contemplate what we have been doing or haven't been doing, and then to take brave, courageous steps to move into action in the ways that we can. Just like Clarissa was saying, that stranger stopped, stepped out of their own life to help us ever so briefly sometimes and it made all the difference. You and I definitely by acting make a difference. And the difference is exponential depending on where we're coming from. This is why doing spiritual practices on a daily or even twice or three times daily uh, means is really incredibly critically important, especially for those who, who are considering taking action in new ways. Why? Because it grounds us into the truth of our being and it holds us when we might be swayed by outrage or anger or fear into taking action that we later would regret. And, and maybe, I mean, we've seen in history, the actions taken by our ancestors sometimes are still with us in their negative consequences now. I had someone um, ask me, it's been like six weeks ago, uh, when the riots began to happen and the protests began to happen, um, they were making a case for, isn't violence sometimes a necessary evil? Isn't there a place for violence? Uh, look at the atom bomb was the example they gave me. It ended the war. And they were asking me what I thought about that. And, and I had to really take a pause and think about that for real. And as I thought about it, I thought to myself, well, is the war really over? Actually, it took me a while to get there. But when I began to look at the consequences of the atomic bomb for the world, not just for Japan, not just for America, but for the world, I had to ask myself the question, well, is it over? Because I don't think it is. And so while I didn't ever answer that person because I couldn't figure out what to say at the time, I have my answer now. And where does that answer come from? From a grounded place of deep looking, which is a practice that I have been doing day after day, year after year as part of my spiritual process. That's how I ground. And that's what I'm suggesting that you and I do is that we take time every single day to really with the one, with the Tao, with our Buddha nature, whatever you want to call it. The truth of the matter is we need to reside there. We need to be filled up there. We need to nourish ourselves there. Or we may find ourselves in the ruins that Clarissa was speaking of being um, as deeply affected by the ruin as if we were the ones caught in it. And so there's a place and a time for us to practice and that time is right now, right here, just as our, I'm in the right place at the right time to do spiritual practices the way I would, I would um, complete that. I can remember Stephen Covey who wrote the book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People among several others. And I remember reading it for the first time in, I, I think I was late twenties. And he was telling a story, I couldn't find it this morning, but it was a story about a general in World War II. And uh, they were, his whole unit 
was about to go into a really, really profound battle. And he knew it. And he knew that there were consequences that were coming to the unit. And he knew that the decisions that he made on the battlefield that day were going to be critical to the survival and well-being of his people. And so he turned to one of his lieutenants and said, I'm going back in my tent because I need to pray twice as long today. Now I take that to mean that he was spending time grounding himself in his personal spiritual faith so that as he moved out to make the decisions that would affect hundreds, maybe thousands of people, he was centered in something that had nothing to do with the outer world, but had to do with his inner life and his connection to the one. You and I need that connection. And I know that for a lot of us, a lot of us, including me sometimes, that connection is fragile, it's frail, sometimes not even apparent. And it's deeply important that you and I find that connection through practices and I'm being not specific here about which ones because each person has to find their own way to link, to connect to the indwelling universal energy and intelligence that flows through all things and all people. That is in you and it's in me and we can connect to it. Uh, we have to find our way to it and then s reside there learn to tame the mind so it will allow us to stay put in that place of connection. The longer we're there, the more nourished we become, the more centered and grounded we become, so that when we do face adversity or difficulties in the outer world, when we are called into action, we're coming from the purest, clearest, most centered place we possibly can. I don't know if you know the story of Martin Luther. Uh, he was the one that posted the edicts on the door of the Catholic Church and uh, rejected Catholicism in the manner in which it had been being offered. Indulgences were being sold, promising people that if they paid for that, they would get to heaven. And, and he objected to a lot of the practices. So he, he rejected the church and started what is now Protestantism. He started a whole Protestant, Protestant. So he started this whole new path of Christianity. And one of the things that he said during that time is he said, I have so much to do that I shall spend the first three hours on my knees in prayer. Same, same idea, right? It's the idea of really taking the time to treat first, to do the spiritual work first, and then move our feet. So from a societal level, you don't see much of this, actually. But there are shining lights, shining examples in our current history in the, in the last century that, that shine out because they, I believe they've been centered in prayer and meditation and their own deep courage. One, obviously, Martin Luther King Jr., who got much of his teaching from Gandhi, Mahatma Gandhi. Um, Mother Teresa comes to mind as well while she was not. Um, marching for civil rights or seeking independence from uh, oppressors, she was seeking to answer a call that she had been given that she was being thwarted in answering. And she just courageously went forward, just working and working and working so that she, the call could be answered. So this leads me to some questions for you and then I'll close. Um, what are you doing spiritually? Are you practicing in some fashion or have, have the current times and the upset and the upheaval and being in pandemic taken you away from your practice? If this is so, may I please invite you back either into that practice or a new one. And if you haven't discovered any, oh my goodness, every spiritual teacher on the planet is online offering almost always for free beautiful, beautiful practices that, that will hold us centered in all that's going on. So please, invest yourself in those. The second question, Clarissa says, we were made for times like these. Remember? Yes, you remember. 
And the way that we're called, she said, do what you can to actively help, not just talk and anguish about things. Do whatever and with whomever else you can, whoever and whatever is closest to your kindest heart, and it will help. So my second question to you is, what is closest to your kindest heart? What are you being called into to do? I suspect that for many of us, we feel like because we can't affect the whole thing, that what we're called to do is so insignificant as to be unimportant. And that actually is a wrong conclusion. Actually, every single little tiny bit of action moving with the kindest heart to make a difference in people's lives, in the life of our world, every single tiny bit is important. And I suspect, like me, You've been called to do something that on the surface might not seem like you're down in the trenches and digging people out of the rubble of the ruins. And yet what I know is that it takes all of us doing all of it, every single part and piece linked together so that the change can happen in a way that's not only immediate, but long lasting. So it's possible that your kindness, your action is something that at first will seem insignificant, but as it rolls out from you, it will be transferred from person to person to person to person in a wave of action that may seem insignificant when one person does it, but then it catches hold and moves out through all of us. So whatever you're called to do, please do that. Please do that. And my last question to you is to live life in this time of pandemic and social unrest requires a tremendous amount of courage. You have the heart for this work. You were, were made for times like these. And I guess it's more of a statement. I want you to know that the courage that you need specifically for the life that you're living is available to you through the indwelling presence. Turn to that now, invoke it, and it will be with you. To know this with me, please join me in prayer. Know, as I know very clearly, there is a divine power and intelligence moving through every single sacred human. It moves in me and it moves in all that is. It is not diffused through reality, but rather offers its entirety to each one of us and every one of us in a sacred gift that has no limit, no time, no space, and no negation in it. It always, always answers the call of our heart. And so I know for myself that the call of my heart is to reach wide and deep into the courage of my own being and pray, meditate, practice spiritually, that I may be a light and a beacon in this world of change. To practice deeply and have the courage to move from that practice into an engagement and action of, of whatever no nature I am called to do. I am supported by that intelligence in just the right way to do it. I trust this implicitly. I no longer doubt myself or the indwelling presence. Instead, I center and I scooch into it and I allow it to be all that I am, directing the flow of my life and action. I am grateful for this, and so it is. I have a couple of announcements, and they're new announcements, so uh, I want to make sure that you hear them in case you'd like to be involved. First of all, today we have planned a lasagna bed workshop. That with lasagna bed in, in the Pacific Northwest is a style of gardening that minimizes weeds, which we have in abundance here. And the workshop is happening, the time in our constant contact was uh, noon, but our volunteers actually can't come at noon. And so we're going to be meeting at six tonight up at the center in the Victory Garden. Right now we have two volunteers, and if you would like to volunteer, we'd love you to be there at 6 tonight. Bring a mask, and you will learn the ways of lasagna bed gardening while building uh, a couple of them, and we'd love your help with that. We lost a beloved member of our community this last week. Her name is Jean McVeigh, 
And uh, she had the blessed experience of dying in her sleep, which we all hope to do. And Jean is going to be having a memorial. We'll have a memorial a celebration of life for her in the near future. The family's a bit in shock. So we're going to be uh, working with them and we'll let you know more details as they come up. But I wanted to let you know Jean had passed in a beautiful way. Also, we have a brand new class that's starting on July 14th. It goes from 5 to 6.30 p.m. It's being taught by the rogue rabbi herself, Kalish Leviel, who is also a licensed practitioner in our center. Kalish is an incredible learner, a lifelong learner, and she's been studying with a man named Mike Dooley, who's written a book called Infinite Possibilities. And uh, Kalish has... Um, received instruction on teaching infinite possibilities for our center. So this will be a six week class starting on the 14th of July. And uh, you, what you'll need for this, it's a Zoom class, but Kalish has learned, and I didn't know this, maybe you didn't either, that this class in particular uses a shared screen and it uses it a lot. So I didn't know that if you're using a phone to Zoom, you can't see shared screens. So she's requesting that if all you have is a phone, that you either find a different way to attend the class or not sign up for it because much of the class is uh, going to be sharing different inspiring things. The whole class is about thriving and co-creating with the indwelling presence. So you can sign up by contacting the center office by phone or by email info at csl-bellingham.org and she would love to have you as a student. And last but not least, I wanted to let you know about a very unusual thing we're having. We're having a celebration parade up at our center. What is that? We're having it on July 5th from 1 to 2, so it's a very limited amount of time. And we are celebrating the new, <clears throat> the new practitioners who were just licensed this week and the new board members who never got acknowledged because the pandemic hit just as they were coming on board. And so the entire, most of the board, most of the practitioners, Clara, Joe, me, will all be on hand standing in the parking lot six feet apart with masks. Um, and you're invited to drive by from one to two anytime in there and to have signs or honk your horn or have things that you, know, you wanna offer to the practitioners or any of us through the window, we're gonna be far enough apart from your car that I think it'll be safe for outside. So if you would like to come and be part of the parade, we'd love to have you July 5th, one to two. All right, so if you have questions about that, please email the center and we'll do our best to answer any questions. Right now I'm going to invite Amber back on board and we'll close out with a wonderful, inspiring song. Thank you for coming today. Thank you for your donations. They mean the world to us. Hmm. Thanks, Andrea. Man, I'm excited about that parade to see you all. I'll be there playing some tunes out of the back of my truck. <laughs> all right, let's sing out into this beautiful day together. Blessed day, I am thankful, grateful heart, I am whole.
contributions and your support, and we hope to see you again next week. Bye, everybody.